Total Mix FX is one of the most comprehensive tools for audio engineers and musicians alike. From recording yourself at home to huge live shows with over 300 audio channels, everything is possible with Total Mix FX. And it comes as standard for all RME audio interfaces. So if you master Total Mix FX once, you're good to go for the rest of your life. In the last couple of weeks, many users asked about a brief insight of the basic functionality of Total Mix FX. So in this beginner's guide, we will talk about the basic layout and feature set of Total Mix FX. But before we start, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel and that you click on the notifications button to get all the updates on future products and on our latest workshops. So, let's dive into Total Mix FX. If we open Total Mix FX, we have three rows at our disposal. The first row represents the hardware inputs, i.e. the physical inputs of our audio interface. In this case, I'm using the Babyface Pro and therefore I have 12 audio channels or 12 hardware input channels. These are my two XLR inputs, my instrument inputs and my four ADAT inputs that I have now for demonstration purpose now linked and unlinked so you can see you can use them as stereo or as a mono channel. The second row is the software playback channels. These are the audio channels that you can assign from your DAW or from your Mac or PC or your iOS device. For demonstration purpose, I have opened up a Ableton session and if I click on play now, you can see that my first software playback channel that I called Ableton is now getting signal. And I can assign all these 12 channels to my Ableton session. So if I switch, for example, to, to channel 7, 8, I now have the ADA channels selected. All right. And if I click on pause again, you see there's no signal. Okay. On the bottom, I have the hardware outputs. These are the physical outputs of your RME audio interface. In this case, like I said before, I use the Babyface Pro and now I have my 12 output channels. These are my main outputs that are the XLR outputs on the back of the unit. And I have my headphones output, which is here on the side. And of course, I have also my four ADAT outputs. Now that we understand the basic channel layout, let's talk about mixing and routing audio in Total Mix FX, because that's one of the key benefits of RME audio interfaces and Total Mix FX. So before we start, select the submix mode under the routing mode in Total Mix FX. If you remember now, we said that we have two types of input channels. We have the hardware input channels and we also have the software playback channels. And on the bottom, we have the hardware outputs. What makes Total Mix FX so special now is the way it handles these outputs. Because every output can have its own mix. If we highlight one of these channels, we can increase or decrease the amount of level that is sent to this particular output just by turning up or down the input channel fader or the software playback channel. Let me highlight this again with my Ableton session. 
if I go now into my Ableton session and I click on play again, you see that my software playback channel that I called Ableton is getting signal. Normally I want to hear this on my main speakers. So I go to my main speaker, the main speaker is now highlighted and I now turn up the software playback channel one. So now my main speaker is getting the Ableton signal. If I want to do this again for my headphones, I can do this. I just go onto my headphones and turn up the software playback channel. And I can do this independently for all these outputs. I hope this demonstration was helpful. If you have any questions or you would like to know more about Total Mix FX or RME audio interfaces, please write them down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.